in astrophotography, when we get a new scope, we also need a new automatic focuser. And there's this instinctive action deep in us embedded that we simply go and order an EAF, right? Because everybody else has it, because it's like the default, because we don't know if there's anything else out there, right? And I have to admit, also on my first two scopes, I installed an EAF. So when I now got my third scope, my question was, could it be something better? And to solve that question, I bought a Primo Lucha Lab Sesto Senso 2. So in this video, we will figure out what are the advantages of the Sesto Senso, what are the potential disadvantages, we will unbox it, we will install it to my new ASCAR 103 APO, and we will also install it on the computer to make it work. All of that right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space, I'm Sascha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So before we get hands on, unbox and install, let's just from a theoretical point of view, look at the pros and the cons of the Sesto Senso 2. And by the way, Sesto Senso is Italian and means six sense. So either the focuser can see dead people or it knows ahead how it has to focus. I don't know which ones of these two it is, we definitely have to ask Filippo. So let's start with the cons of the Sesto Senso because there are only a few and then we have them off the table. First of all, it is, like everything from Prima Lucha Lab, a little bit more expensive than what you get from Sivo. But the difference will actually be less than you probably think. I take the prices of a Gina Astro of today. For the EAF, you pay $200. For the Sesto Senso 2, you pay $270. So probably what we have to figure out today is, are these additional $70 worth it? The second con is that it is a little bit heavier than the EAF. But from my point of view, in most cases, this is neglectable. And then third, I read on cloudy nights that some people have problem with slippage, which means that the motor was turning, but the focus are not. But we will see that when we install it, that most likely these people have done something wrong in the installation. So let's now go to the pros. What justifies these 70 additional dollars? First of all, and that's for me already worth it, you have a manual focuser, which means even when you have the Sesto Senso installed, you can still focus it manually with the knob. You cannot do that with an EAF. And especially if you also want to use your scope sometimes visually, that really helps. Second of all, the EAF is known for substantial backlash. And the Sesto Senso 2 has a reputation of having almost no backlash. There's also people claiming that the Sesto Senso is more precise and faster, but a hard fact again is that the Sesto Senso can carry weights up to 7 kilograms, while the EAF can only carry weights until 5 kilograms. So if you have a heavy camera, camera filter wheel combination, off-axis guiding, anything of that, the Sesto Senso can better deal with all this weight. Another point is that we will see right afterwards that the Sesto Senso is extremely easy to install practically on every scope. While with the EAF you need to install all these different parts, the Sesto sensor, you simply as a unit screw it to the scope. And then last but not least, but we will discuss this in a separate video, the Sesto sensor does support the very new Prima Luce Lab Ghost Mode. And that you for sure not miss the video about the Ghost Mode, please make sure that you subscribe. And with that, let's get going and let's unbox the thing. Okay, so here is the 103 APO from ASCAR, and here is our Sesto Senso 2. So let's see that we can make these two things one. So let's start with unpacking the Sesto Senso. So I'm opening the box up. There is some quality report, and there is also an explanation how to add it. And here we have the Sesto Senso, and it is quite heavy actually. Wow, okay. And we have some cables. And that's it, package is empty. So let's see in detail what we have in here. 
We have a power cable with a cigarette lighter that might come always in handy. Not really for that purpose here, but anyway, we have a USB type A cable with a USB C end here. And there's something else. And that seems to be the adapters. So I had to cut that open. There's two, three actually Allen keys. You can never have enough Allen keys. But on the other side, I think as astrophotographers, there's nothing we have more than Allen keys. Anyway, some more. And in this little bag here are some tiny, tiny, tiny little screws. And here are these adapters where we will have to find the right one. They look really cool, really nice all different colors. I wonder what I can do with the with the other ones. They look too cool to just store away. So here you can see them live. So they have all a different size of a hole drilled in it. And if you like to bet, by the way, you can bet right now which color will actually fit for this scope. If there would have been an orange one, that would have been a giveaway, but as there is no orange one, just take your pick. So I took now the plastic away from the Sesto Senso. You see here in front the bracket where it actually will be fixed to the focuser without needing all the construction that you need for a EIF. Here on the side you have a USB-C port. You have a port where you can connect it to the rotator, to the Arco if you have one. I still don't have one. You have a 12 volt DC and you have a connective for a temperature sensor. That's all the connectors that we have here. And it actually has Wi-Fi. And that is also a sign that it will work in Oops. But that will be for another video. So the first thing we have to do now is to remove all of this stuff here. So given we received some Allen keys, I will obviously honor them and use them. And this one here really fits because as you know, if it doesn't fit, you have to acquit, but um, yeah, this one fits. So fine. So let's take this out here. Then we have to do the same with the big one. By the way, it actually states that the Sesto sensor requires such a double focuser, so a fine focuser with a um, big focuser, that you can actually use it. So we remove that too. So that's what's actually left. I'm kind of a little bit sad. These are really cool knobs, heavy knobs. So actually sad to do them away. And now, now come these little thingies into play. And by the way, also just to say this big one here has to have 25 millimeters. That's the most common focuser diameter. If it has any other diameter, you can buy adapter, which still makes it work, but then you need an adapter. So measure that before you actually order the Sesto Senso. So if you actually did bet, hold your breath. Is it the blue one? Definitely not. The red one? No way. We're coming closer. The silver one? You would also have lost. Black? Nope. So there's two left. So the fever curve is rising. If you either we're betting on green or gold. You are close for winning. Let's take the green first. And even the green is too small. So the winner has to be, and otherwise we have an issue, <laughs> the gold. So let's try. And yep, it fits. So now I have to get one of these little screws here. So it goes best if you take it out again and if you screw it in like this. Now we put it in again and screw it on. Now when I read some cloudy night postings and so on about the Sesto Senso, it said that some people had issues with some slippage. And they said the most important part is that when you put this here on, that you actually tighten it up very, very well. Because if that here gets loose, then you have the slippage. Okay, now comes the next thing. As you can see, here is also a hole. And with that, this here, this, this small part, will be screwed tightly onto that. And this outside part will be screwed onto that part here, I guess. So now you also have to decide how you want to have the Sesto Senso lined out. 
if you want to have flat like this. And now we're actually first screwing on the Sesto Senso. So this sits very tight now. And now I can actually take this screw here and screw the inner part on. And also here we have to ensure that we do this really, really tight. And I see when I now focus on the other side that the Sesto Senso is actually turning inside. This one stays stable as a rock. So it looks like this all went well. And the cool part is that I really didn't use any other material. There's no bridge. It's, it's really easy to assemble. And the other cool part is that I can still focus. As you can see, I can still freely focus. And that's the other cool part, what you cannot do with an EAF. So now I will put some electricity on it. I will connect it to the Eagle. And then let's see if we can make it focus. So welcome to my Eagle. This is all the newest version here. And now we want to get the Sesto Senso also working. Now, while most definitely the installation of the Sesto Senso was much easier than installing an EAF. When it comes to installing the software, it's a little bit the opposite. But if you stick with me, I'll show you around. And otherwise, there's actually a good manual in the driver package, if you feel like. And that's, by the way, the first thing you have to do when we talk about driver pack. You have to go here to the homepage of Prima Lucha Lab. You go here on top on downloads. And there you actually download the newest software, obviously for the Eagle, if you have one, and here for the Sesto Senso 2. And even if you don't have an Eagle, you also have to download here the newest software package of Play. So once you have actually downloaded all that, you can close the browser. Now what you will actually get in this download directory is, and I already mentioned it, a manual, which is actually quite good. And that's a little bit something with Prima Lucha Lab. Always stick with a manual or with a video of me. <laughs> so the next thing is we go here in the system driver, Windows, and now you will actually look here at the installer, the 64, and you will install that. And what this does, it installs actually the ASCOM driver. So far, so good. But now comes the crazy part. So what you do now, you go in the control panel. And that, by the way, while you have already the Sesto Senso connected to your computer, via the USB port, and you have also connected the Sesto sensor with the 12 volt. And it states in the manual, you should first connect the energy, then the USB port. Once you have all done that, you go here in the control panel on device manager. On the device manager, you will actually see a section other devices. I do not have this on here anymore as I already installed it, but I'll show it to you in the manual. This is how it will look like other devices. And you, then you see this here, CP21 and USB UART bridge controller. So when you see that, what you actually do, you right click on it and you tell it update driver software. It will give you two options, either do it automatically or search on your PC for the driver. You select the second option to browse for it. And then you will actually direct it to this downloaded package to this Sesto Senso 2 system driver, to this directory you will direct it. And you will say it should look there. And it will find it and it will install the driver. Once this is done, it's not over it actually. You go again in the device manager and this time you go here to ports. And here you find now this UART bridge again. And what you need to know is the comms port. And in my case, it's COM12. The next thing we have to do, we have to open Play. Play is a software um, which would kind of mimic a little bit Nina, but easier, but mostly only for PLL hardware. So yeah, I use Nina, as you know. Anyway, here you go to Focuser, Settings, and now you go here, select COM port, and you see now COM12 appears. So you click that. And you say here, click to connect the focuser. And it connects Sesto Senso 2 
Now you might ask, why would I do that if I would never really use play? Well, because here, please update focuser firmware first. And you can only do that in play. So we click here on please update firmware, click to upgrade firmware. I'm always very uneasy updating any firmware because that's mostly where you can kill a device if anything goes wrong with upgrading the firmware. Upgrade finished, please disconnect, says to sensor two USB and power cables, then connect again both cable. Click on reconnect button. So I'm gonna do that now. I connected both cable again, I press reconnect and it reconnected. Now it says please calibrate and it guides you actually through it. Select your focuser type, telescope with external focuser, press next. Manually move the focuser in all in position then press the button below. So I confirm that, press start button to move focuser outwards and you hear it, it works. Press stop button before focuser draw tube reaches all out position. And I say stop. And with that, the calibration is completed and everything is fine now. So we exit now play. And now finally comes the moment where we can go in Nina. We go here on focuser, we just take the PLL ASCOM focuser. We go here on settings. We ensure that it's here on 12. That's fine, select. And we start it up. And here it comes. Everything is fine. And if I now click on the arrow, yes, I hear it sounds. So everything is fine. So this is how you install the Sesto Senso on your PC. But now that we actually know that it works, we have to complete it because as you see, there are still some screws around and they were not put there just to be left at the floor. So first of all, when we look at the bracket here, we have some smaller holes and these holes would like to be filled with these little screws. And I could imagine that these slippages which were reported could also have happened because people just assumed that these were spare screws and did not fix it completely. So there are three small ones here on the bracket beside the big one which have to be installed. But that's not everything. Remember that we added this screw here at this part to actually lock the other part. There is also a second one needed. And how you actually get to it is by turning now the focuser and then screwing this one in too. So all that is spare is one little tiny screw. But now the thing sits like a rocket here. And no matter what I do on the other side, it's not moving at all. And on the other side, we see in here nicely that it turns. Okay, so from my first impressions, I'm really happy. The mechanical installation went very well. The installation on the PC, you simply have to follow the manual, then it's no issue at all. And I will end this video as any other in the last time. Once the cloud are lifting, I will test it out in the wild. And if I figure anything out worth mentioning, you will hear that in one of my next videos. See you next time and clear skies.